Hello friends! In this video we're going to try to answer the question what is an orthorectified image and what kind of corrections do we have to make to create an orthorectified image. So here's the outline of where we'll be going over the next 10 or 15. Uh, first we'll look at scale and ask why do cameras distort scale. Then we'll get into the basic vocabulary of aerial imagery. We'll then talk about some of the internal distortions that can happen to an image and then external distortions like relief displacement. Okay, so first we have to have a firm understanding of what is scale for a map or an image. It's the ratio of the distance on that map or image to the equivalent distance on the ground. Okay, so a big map like this might have a scale where one inch equals 1,485 miles, a zoomed in map like this might have one inch equals 20 miles. If you take those as a unitless ratio, you get one to 94 million or one to 13 million. Okay, so scale is this idea of how ground distance is represented on a map or image. Now, by definition, if it's a map, it has a constant scale across the map. And one common map projection would be called an orthographic projection, okay? This is, and this has a constant scale. Here's an example of that. Imagine this is kind of your map box up here, this square, and you're looking down on Earth's surface. Every object or pixel on Earth's surface, surface projects upward into um, its exact extent as if you were kind of just dropping a blanket down onto the surface. Um, and so that gives us a constant scale. In contrast, uh, images are typically collected in what's called a perspective projection, okay? So in this case, we have a single lens kind of marked here by L and light, rays of light are emanating from the different points up into that lens and we're going to talk in a minute that they essentially uh, pass through what's called a positive plane similar to the negative plane and that defines their location on the subsequent image. So you can see that this creates a problem for objects of different height, right? So for example, uh, this tree the top and the bottom would represent only one point on an orthographic map projection. However, in perspective projection, the top of this tree maps out to, to a very different point than the bottom of the tree, essentially because it's being viewed a bit from the side in this perspective projection. Okay, so that's the problem, right? The goal of orthorectification is we want to take a map that has this type of scale distortion and actually warp it or change it, rearrange the pixels so that it you preserve that pixel information, you preserve the picture, but uh, it is has a constant scale throughout the image. Okay, so before we go any further, we need to learn a little bit about the basic vocabulary of aerial imagery. We already got dangerously close to it in that last slide. So uh, imagine that you have a camera sitting up in space pointed down to Earth. And uh, that camera has a lens and it's right here. And specifically this point will be called the pupil of the lens. And we'll often refer to it as L. Uh, rays of light are coming from the ground, say point E, and they're going through that pupil and then being refracted by the lens onto the focal plane of the image, which in this case we're going to refer to as the negative plane. And we refer to it as negative because it's flipped or inverted from what is actually seen on the ground. Importantly, this F is the focal distance here. So when we're talking about orthorectification, we're often going to be working in what's called the positive plane. So this is an imaginary plane that is one focal distance below the lens, okay? 
and we're going to think a lot about how points or rays of light coming from a point where they intersect this positive plane. And indeed, we can imagine an image as made up as a series of points, much like point E, that each one can be defined by uh, a coordinates within what's called the image or pixel coordinate system. So uh, that would be an X coordinate here and a Y coordinate here. The X axis is always oriented parallel to the flight path and Y is always orthogonal to that. We often call this a 3D Cartesian coordinate system because we add an extra coordinate uh, minus C, which is basically the uh, focal distance. One other point to make, um, we're going to start this video assuming that imagery has already been warped into an image coordinate system. If you were starting with air photos, for example, old air photos, you would actually have to do some kind of a fine or similarity transform to get it into that coordinate system. Also, additional disclaimer, almost everything we talk about in this video is going to be highly simplified. We're going to assume a perfectly vertical camera orientation and we're going to assume that the principal point of the image is essentially the same as the perspective center. We're going to take a very simplified version. So with all of that said and that introduced, where do some of these scale problems come from? We can divide them really into internal and external factors. Internal factors tend to be very small. These are things like the radial distortion of the lens, the refraction of light through the lens and the curvature of Earth. External factors tend to be large, things like the tilt of the camera or relief displacement due to elevation variations on the ground. So in this next part of the video, we're going to talk about some of those internal sources of distortion. And correcting for these is often called image refinement or often we'll refer to using a camera model that has a lot of these geometric properties built into it. So radial distortion essentially is a property of the lens. And what this means is that the scale of the image is changing slightly with the radial distance, the distance from the optical axis. So if you imagine an image where your optical axis is vertically intersecting the center of the image, and the further you go from that optical axis in any direction, the more distortion you get in your image. So what this uh, grid shows is the actual area that uh, a ground unit might take up on the ground. And then this grid shows the kind of proportional area that it might take up in your image after it has been distorted. So obviously a radial correction would attempt to restore uh, each of these elements back to its original size. And that is done using uh, calibrated camera specs. So every camera has specifications for radial distortion and it's a fairly straightforward correction. Another factor is curvature of the Earth. Particularly for satellite imaging, if you are looking from very far away, the Earth itself actually starts to curve. So a point that you're seeing here, P, on the surface of the Earth, would intersect that positive plane here. But if you wanted to restore it to an orthographic projection, you'd actually have to make this correction D Earth and move it out here. And this is done using ground control points for satellite imagery. So let's close out this video talking a little bit about external distortions, uh, relief displacement, and tilt. So we said in this video we're always going to assume a vertical optical axis, but in practice many satellite images can be tilted. And essentially that has the effect that uh, far away patches of ground take up a little bit less space in the image than they should. So correcting for this requires, uh, of course, knowing the tilt, knowing the geometric specs of your camera,
and restoring or enlarging some of these areas to more accurately represent their true area. And this brings us to our final source of distortion or scale variation in our image, and that is relief displacement. And this is by far the biggest source of distortion. And before I explain how we might correct for this, I want to point out that by this point in the process, our image has been refined and corrected for uh, kind of internal distortions, and it has also been tilt corrected. So everything I'm about to show you essentially assumes a corrected and perfectly vertically oriented image. So first let's let's orient ourselves. Um, we have a camera lens L up here. Here's our positive plane, which is uh, mapping out, this is our positive image plane, so this is going to be our image. And it's mapping out the land surface down here, uh, and we're assuming some kind of horizontal datum, which in this case corresponds with the base of the tower. Now here's the problem. Uh, because this is a perspective image, the top of the tower at point A is mapping to little a in the image, the base of the tower at A prime is mapping to little a prime. Okay, so even though the top and bottom of the tower are in the exact same physical location, they're showing up at different points in our perspective image. So what we'd like to do is estimate this displacement D and then create an ortho-rectified image in which point A is collapsed back onto A prime. So how can we estimate this dis image displacement D? The first thing we're going to do is recognize a pair of similar triangles. So that is the ratio of the shadow of the tower, big D, divided by the height of the tower. So D over H is the same as this distance from the optical axis out to the extent of the shadow. That's R divided by H, which is the height of the lens above the datum. So we set up that ratio equality. We can then uh, essentially just convert uh, big D and big R into these positive plane distances because we know those are proportional. Um, so we're going to sub in little d for big D and little r for big R. And then we can just rearrange this equation to solve for little d. And once we know that number, we can literally just shift this pixel uh, back towards the center by that amount. So I'll just wrap this up with a real world example of this. So here is a raw satellite imagery up on top. You can see we have a river flowing here, and I flagged this blue point on the river. And then we have a ridge line right here. I flagged this red point on the ridge line. So here's what those look like in a kind of oblique view of the digital topography. And we can see that, in fact, the ridge line and the river are a bit closer together than they appear in this raw image, probably because of this perspective effect. When we ortho-rectify the image, we can see that the ridge line has essentially been moved closer to the point on the river. So to wrap this up, some key takeaways. We can say that most satellite images are distorted due to lens geometry, light refraction, earth curvature, tilt, and relief displacement. Correction for geometry and refraction is done using the camera specifications. Earth curvature is corrected using ground control points. And correction for that relief displacement requires a digital elevation model and some of the geometric assumptions we just went through. Thanks for listening.